Hey everyone, welcome to my channel. I am Jackie and if this is your first time, I welcome you. I appreciate you. I hope you find something that you enjoy, that you like, and you subscribe. <laughs> and if you are a returning viewer, you are the real MVP. And I say this every time only because I mean it because you keep showing up and I need you. We need each other. Okay. So I'm having kind of like a, a little bit of a bad hair day. Um, but I do have on my Anywhere Design headband with the buttons for my mask. And I decided to make a video before I went to lunch. Um, so today's video is going to be, what is it like working in occupational medicine as a physician assistant? Now, I cannot speak for every occupational medicine PA just for myself and my experience and where I work. So for those of you who do not know, I do live and work in Wisconsin. Um, I work for a um, an occupational medicine practice. I don't know if it's a group, it's a company. I work for them. They're nationwide, have over 500 clinics across the country. And I am the sole provider at my clinic. That means I'm the only provider. There are no other PAs. There's no physician physically located here. There's no nurse practitioners, me. It's just me. I call the shots. <laughs> but I do have easy access to my supervising physician who's actually just down the street. I think we have another clinic that's maybe, it's less than a mile away. But um, yeah, if I have questions, I can call him or call like our director in Chicago. Yeah, so I've been working in occupational medicine for almost a year now. Next month will be an actual year. And I never heard of this specialty when I was in school, so I would have never thought to go into occupational medicine. Um, and yeah, I just had no, I had no clue. So, my week involves me working Monday through Friday from 8 a.m. until 5 p.m. I am in a salary position. I make a good salary. And uh, I am sometimes here after five. I don't have any call. I don't work weekends. I don't work holidays. The only reason I will be here after five is, is if a patient comes in at the last minute, which happens sometimes, and we like to, for security, make sure that two people are leaving at a time. My staff consists of, I have one medical assistant, I have a radiology technologist that also does medical assistant duties, and I have a front desk person. We have an operations director that comes in and does the operation stuff. <laughs> That's not really where I have to focus. My main focus is on patient care, making sure the clinic is running properly. I am also the manager of the clinic, so again, my operational Things are low, but I do kind of help make sure the flow is good, that we're meeting our target goals, that we are, I want to be the best clinic. I want them to rate me as a five-star clinician. I want everyone to be satisfied and happy. Um, the type of patients I see. So in my particular clinic, I see mostly people who have uh, work injuries. That's where the occupational medicine comes in. And occupational medicine differs per state. I used to do occupational medicine in Illinois. It's a little bit different here in Wisconsin. I I don't feel like I do a lot of paperwork, but I do enough paperwork. I am able to finish my chart and when I see my patient, I don't have charts left over for days and days, which I did have happen at my other job. I so I see a patient, a new injury, and I treat them. So these are going to be back pain, sprains, cuts. Okay, listen, lax, lacerations and lax, that's what I want. My whole preference is that if you hurt yourself at work, cut yourself. Then I can fix you. <laughs> I like procedures. So working in occupational medicine gives me a good mix of procedures. I develop short-term relationships with my patients. I've never been a fan of these long-term years and years relationships um, with my patient, which is why I haven't worked in family medicine or something like that. I do see my patients for the most, I think the longest I've followed a patient was maybe like four weeks. 
So two weeks is probably the average for how long I am seeing a patient. And most people get better. I do refer to specialists if they have something that needs a specialist to handle. Like I can't do any shoulder surgeries. So we get a lot of shoulder injuries and a lot of, I would say my most, most of my injuries are either cuts, shoulders, or back. Everybody gets back pain. Poor lifting technique is damaging and costs organizations and employers lots of money. So I um, always remind patients, use good lifting techniques. Things are heavy. And when you come here and get a pre-employment exam and you lift 50 pounds once, that's okay. But when you have to do 50 pounds repetitively over an 8, 10, 12 hour time period, you can't get sloppy with it because you can really hurt yourself. Speaking of pre-employment exams, that's the other thing that I do. A lot of companies send their um, new hires to me and I do their physicals. I do physicals all day. My patients say that my physicals are always more in more detail than when they go see their regular doctor. And I was like, listen, because I can't have the liability. We're doing a head to toe and I'm doing everything. <laughs> no rectal exams though, so no prostates either. Um, I also do some urgent care. I don't have many urgent care patients, but I do come from an urgent care background and I will make a video about urgent care at another time. But I do do some urgent care, so again, I like procedures, but people come in with sore throat, pink eye, and sprains and strains, the typical urgent care type of visit. I, I'm trying to make sure I cover all the bases. I get lots of emails, and I think that's just because I'm also a manager, so I have to make sure I'm staying on top of my emails and that type of paperwork. I would say the best thing about my job is that it is really chill. The location that I work at, I chill. I'm able to, you know, breathe some. Now, don't get it twisted. I do have days where it's just popping, busy, and I'm like, dang, I didn't even get to eat. I didn't even get to pee. But for the most part, my days are pretty pretty okay and for me it's great because I've come from putting in a whole bunch of work since I've been a PA and I think this is a good transition it's nice it's comfortable <laughs> you can do procedures you can manage people you're teaching I do a lot of teaching oh I forgot to mention DOT exams that's probably the other big bulk of the patient um, the patients that I see DOT exams can be interesting Speaking on the health of truck drivers and people who need DOT exams, Lord, to stop gaining weight. I tell you, um, when they are overweight, then all the other healthcare problems seem to follow. They need a sleep study. They probably have high blood pressure and diabetes, and these people get angry at me if they do not get a two-year card like they're used to getting. Um, but it creates an opportunity for me to do a lot of teaching and talk about health maintenance, things that they can do to you know, control their issues, well, their disease, or, um, you know, make sure they qualify for their card. I, I do a lot of DOT exams, a lot. And I'm just thinking, I think that's it. I kind of changed the location. So this is where therapy happens, but with COVID going on, Therapy has not been existing every day here, so I have a different space to record. It's more quiet. You hear that beat, that's the door open. I don't know who's at the door, but yeah. I hope you found this interesting. I hope you found it helpful. And maybe you want to do occupational medicine and never really considered it. You can choose it as an option. But I'm going to go to lunch because lunch matters. Bye.